All right, welcome everybody. I hope everybody's having a great day two of Dreamforce. There's been a lot of great sessions. Um, and I really appreciate everybody taking time out of their day to join my session. As I know, we're getting ready to go to a concert and enjoy the rest of the evening after a fun-filled day of sessions. So why are we all here? All of you in this room have, at some point, I'm guessing, given a demo, or you're going to be given a demo in Salesforce. Show of hands, how many have demoed Salesforce before in some way, shape, or form? All right, good. Most, almost everybody. So why do we demo? There's a lot of different reasons why we're sitting in front of a client, it's the end of a project, end of a sprint, it might be a sales presentation. There's a lot of different reasons why we're gonna be demonstrating something in Salesforce. But at the core of it all, there's three things we wanna do while we're demoing Salesforce. We wanna build trust and credibility with our stakeholders. It's a long project, it's a long sprint, and we want them to know that we hear them and what we're going to be demoing in front of them, we've heard their feedback and we're accomplishing what they want us to do. The second piece is building, uh, showcasing our effective communication. The, co the communication during a project is probably one of the most important pieces. And when you're demoing at the end of whatever the sprint is or your sales presentation, you wanna showcase effective communication and show them that you've heard what they're looking to do. The most important piece is addressing the pain points. And this applies whether it's a sales presentation or you're demoing at the end of a project, there's pain points that they have. Something's wrong. Or there's a reason they've called you in to either build a product or showcase some kind of product that we have. So that's why I'm here to speak to you today. My name's Elliot Spence. I'm a principal consultant with Silverline. Silverline is a global, or a, is a Salesforce digital transformation consultancy. We do financial services, media entertainment, and healthcare industries. And the favorite part of my job is doing the demonstrations, is doing the demos at the end of a sprint or in the sales cycle. We get in front of the client, we get to really showcase what we've done and get them excited to jump into Salesforce. So while demos are something that people generally kind of look past, they're a very important part of the Salesforce life cycle. And when we're demoing, there's a lot of best practices that we need to really focus on and if we hit all of these that I'm gonna go through today, there's a great chance that they're gonna be celebrating your demo, they're gonna be excited to get into the system, and it's really gonna increase that user adoption. So the first one is know your audience. And this is one of the most important pieces of the demo because based on who's gonna be in that room and who you're gonna be speaking to, you're gonna adjust that demo a little bit. If it's admins, you may want to get a little more technical and really explain what you've built and how you've built it and how this is working. On the other side, if it's end users, if it's the users that are going to be in the system, you may not want to be as technical. You probably definitely don't want to be as technical. You want to focus on what they want to do and how it's going to really add value to their job and increase efficiency in their job. So what are some of the do's and don'ts when you're speaking to that audience? The first thing you want to definitely do you wanna to speak directly to that audience. You wanna use language that they understand and language that's gonna resonate with them. What you definitely do not wanna do, and that's in a red up here, is assume they all speak your language, because they do not. And this is what comes back to that effective communication piece. This is where you're talking to them and you're using language that resonates with them. It gets them excited to jump into the system and utilize Salesforce. And that's a part of knowing the audience and using language that they know. Best practice number two, building the demo foundation. And this is another piece that you're doing right at the beginning of the demo. Right when you kick it off, you wanna to talk to them about what we're gonna be getting into in Salesforce, communicating with them, using language that they understand. But this is a math equation, strangely enough. You have your business need, and you wanna address that at the beginning. Tell them that you heard them. Here's the business need we heard. Here's the business need, the business need that we're addressing. We have our feature that we're gonna be demoing during that process. And then at the end, what is the impact? Because it can be an awesome feature, but if you, don't, if you don't really show them and showcase the impact that's gonna have on them, you're not gonna win that demo. They're not gonna be celebrating at the end of it. So what does this look like? An example could be they wanna increase user adoption. Sounds simple enough, but what are, what are the users? Is it operational users? And you may have heard during the process that we, they have Salesforce licenses, they're not using it. 
they still go into their inbox and they're working all their cases, everything they have out of a shared inbox. Let's get them out of that. Salesforce has a great feature called email to case, completely free. Let's set up email to case and get all those emails going into Salesforce and having them work out of Salesforce. And what that does is it, it increases their time because they're not managing through an inbox and fighting through who's done what. It's in Salesforce automatically. They don't have to key it in there. It goes straight into Salesforce and it's going to increase their time and convenience. So do's and don'ts of building the demo foundation. What you want to do right when it starts off, you want to frame up your presentation. Tell them exactly what you're going to demo and why we're going to demo it and what the impact is going to be for them. What you do not want to do is assume they already know what the business impact is. They already know what the business need, the feature, and the impact is going to be because they don't. You want to address that right at the beginning and show or tell them what they're going to be seeing as you're going through that demonstration in Salesforce. Number three, tell a story and bring enthusiasm. And this enthusiasm part comes with your voice. You do not want to go through some monotone setting, and we've all been there, we've seen those demos, we've been in those meetings where it's like 20 minutes in, you're, oh my gosh, I can't go through this. Bring enthusiasm, keep them engaged. And what this comes with is practice. The first time you go through your demo, whatever that may be, should not be when you're actually in front of the audience. Write it all down, write that script down, and as you're writing it, you're clicking through and you know what you're gonna be demoing. It's gonna be on another screen. I can tell you when I'm doing my demos, I have it on another screen, I have my exact click path and what I wanna do and what I wanna to communicate to them. There's so many times I see a demo where they're not doing that. I get halfway through and I'm like, what am I looking at here? Make sure you have that script down, where, what you're gonna showcase and what you wanna to communicate to them as you're going through it. The other piece here, you see production crossed out and it's hiding sensitive data. Do not demo in production, ever. It doesn't matter even if they're internal stakeholders, you may, un unbeknownst to you, go to a, a piece of information that not all users have access to and you're demoing with that on the screen. It just leads to something that can get you, you know, in a little bit of trouble. Make sure you also tell a targeted story. Again, goes back to the audience that you're speaking to. What do they want to hear? and what's the language that they speak. Make sure you're communicating directly to that audience that is on the, on the demo with you. So some do's and don'ts here. Demo do, make sure you're being creative with your story, all right? Add enthusiasm to it. Use your voice to communicate the bigger parts that you want to communicate and showcase to them. What you do not want to do is walk through some boring click path a monotone voice, you're using a lot of fillers because you're not confident in what you're displaying, and that goes back to because you didn't practice. Practice it, have confidence, and tell that targeted story directly to the audience that's on that demo with you. Know and show the magic. We all use Salesforce, we've seen it in action before. We understand the magic and what's going on behind the scenes. The users on that demo, the audience that you're demoing to, do not. So make sure you're showcasing that magic that you've built or the magic that your product brings that you're demonstrating to them. Because there's a lot of pieces that they don't know. They brought you in for a reason or you're demoing for a reason at the end of a project. There's magic there. It's not always going to be the confetti when you get to the end of the path here, but there's other magic that's going to make them excited and you want to showcase that to them. You definitely do want to keep it high level. Don't jump in because you know we're all admins in here. We're all developers where we know what's going on behind the scenes. They don't, we don't want to get behind the scenes with them. We're telling them what they're seeing and what the magic is going on. Maybe it's an email action. Maybe it's something where a notification is going to pop up. Display Salesforce in action and get them excited to use the product. Again, I mention it here, have confidence. Again, that also comes with practice. I'm going to say it again, the, when you deliver your demo, it should not be the first time you're doing the demo. You're going to run into errors. Prepare for it and adjust and go with it. The last piece is slow down. When you're up there demoing, you get excited and you want to run through everything. And next thing you know, you're talking 1,000 miles an hour. The users on the demo, they can't keep up. They're trying to follow what you're doing. They're trying to follow the magic when you're showing it. They can't keep up. So slow down, pause, take breaths. Demo do, make sure you're showing a uh, transformation that is easy for them to understand. Again, who's the audience? Is it admins? Is it end users? Show the transformation that they understand that's going to resonate with them and get them excited. Do not 
focus on what's happening behind the scenes. Using things, oh yeah, see this? A, fl a flow just went off and there's some transformation going on in the background. They don't care. They want to see what happened. All right, so showcase the transformation to them and make it easy for them to understand. Avoid distractions and manage your time. We have limited time when we're up there demoing. Sometimes it's 30 minutes, sometimes it's an hour, sometimes it's like two hours. But you want to manage your time. Make sure you're leaving time at the end of it for questions. There's going to be questions. Make sure you address it, and we're going to get to this. They shouldn't be asking questions during your demo. But get, get through everything. But manage your time and stay on script. How many have been de delivering a demo? Maybe somebody asks questions, something happens, and you want to go, because I've done it before. I'm an admin. I want to go and like, oh, yeah, start solutioning on the, on the demo. Avoid it. Stay on script. It's so easy to avoid the jump off the script and go do something else because you're trying to please them. You're trying to please the stakeholders that you're demoing to. No matter what, stay on script. Avoid any kind of distraction that's going to you know, bump you off that path. Make sure you're engaging the audience and have that parking lot. Does everybody know what I mean by the parking lot? The parking lot for questions. If it's a, ver it's a, if it's a virtual demo, tell them to put them in the chat. Hold questions, put them in the chat. If you're in person, Write them up on some piece of paper. We're going to get to those at the end. You have to get through the demo and show the value that you're delivering to the stakeholders. Demo do here. Did I mention stay on script? Do not come off it. I have terrible stories where it's happened, and it leads to disaster. Stay on your script. What you do not want to do is solution during a demo. I already mentioned that, where it's so easy to get in like, oh, yeah, we can do that. You're going to start demoing almost like a, a solutioning session. Stay on script and get to the end and show the value that you're delivering. Last piece here on the best practices, have a strong wrap up. What you see up here on the screen is actually part of my deck that I deliver on every one of my demos. These are my two goals. Sometimes there's more, sometimes there's others, but goal number one, I want feedback on the functionality. I want to know that what we demoed to you and what we've delivered is exactly what you want it to be. If I get through a demo and I have no feedback at all, I failed. Even if it's like, yeah, this is great, but now that they're seeing it for the first time, they're going to have feedback on, can we do X, Y, Z? Then that's a great demo. They see what the value is, and now they want to they increase on that. Number two is group acceptance. This could be something, even if it's a sales demo, or it's an end of a project or end of a sprint, you want to demonstrate to them and get group acceptance on everything that you've delivered during that project. So these are my two, personally, my two goals of every demo that I deliver. Sometimes, depending on what it is, I add to that, but these are always up there. You have one shot to sell the demo and have a strong ending, and making sure you deliver and have the action items for whoever you're demoing to, and delivering that clear call to action is so important to make sure this ends in a positive manner. The do here, make sure you have a strong closure, action items, and something for them to contact you. How are they going to contact you about what the group acceptance is and the features that you're delivering? Make sure they have that. What you want to make sure you do not do is end suddenly with no time for questions and no time for them to you know, maybe give you that feedback. So you're trying to leave like five to 10 minutes at the end for them to really engage with you about what you've just delivered to them. So we've got through all the best practices, things we can do that, you know, if we cover them, we're going to win the demo. But there's also the vaunted demo fail. What can just throw your demo off the rails without you even getting a chance to address those? So there's five of them. Number one, arrive early to where you're going to be delivering the demo. A lot of times now it's virtual, but if it's in a room and you do not know that room at all, what are you going to be using? Can you hook in? Does your computer work when you hook into it? One thing that's not up here, always have a backup plan. And that could be, you know, if the network's down, you have a hotspot, have a PDF that you're going to deliver, something, some slides. Have a backup plan that if you're just thrown off the rails, you can still deliver some kind of feedback and some kind of demo to the client. The network, this is the number one cause of demo fail. You get to the environment, you get to the room, you log on, and there's no network. There's no Wi-Fi. Now it's like, how am I going to demo Salesforce without any kind of internet? Have hotspot or have some kind of backup plan. Make sure the network's working. Number three, know your equipment. Know the computer. Know the room. Know how you're going to work the room. The last two are kind of self-explanatory. Close everything. How many have been on a demo, especially you know, when we went through the pandemic, 
and you're watching a demo or you're in some meeting and whoever's presenting, there's Slack notifications, Teams, emails popping up, and some of them can be pretty embarrassing. Make sure you close everything down. What I like to do, I just, and I did it right as I sat here during the last session, I just restarted my computer. Just make sure everything's closed. We're not going to have some kind of pop-up happening during our demo. The last piece, always make sure they hold their questions. Whoever's on the call, do not allow them to ask questions. Just tell them to hold them to the end, put them in the chat, because we're going to get to them at the end. If they ask questions, next thing you know, your, your demo's done, because it's going to be question, let's solution that, and it's going to throw you off the rails. So make sure you're holding questions until the end. So what's next? So I do have a trail mix, Salesforce Demo Mastery. Definitely, if, you, if you're somebody like me that loves Trailhead and you're trying to do like a badge a day like I try to do, get in there and do the trail mix, all right? It's set up for like how you're going to engage with people during demos, how you're going to talk to them, and the, the different best practices for delivering a successful demo. Salesforce admins, admin.salesforce.com, tons of valuable resources, presentations on demos, blogs on demos. Make sure you're utilizing admin.salesforce.com. And if you need to contact me, I'm going to be around here at the end, but on X, Elliot S157, you have me on LinkedIn, Elliot Spence MBA, and my email. So if you want to connect with me, I'm happy to talk about demos or anything Salesforce. Survey, I would really appreciate if everybody does a survey on this session. I'm looking for awesome feedback. I think I did great, right? So any session you, you put in a survey for, you're entered for a pass for Dreamforce next year. For every survey, they're giving away 15. So log on there, do your surveys. But with that, I appreciate everybody taking the time out to join my session. Hopefully I see you at the concert tonight. If you want to engage with me and talk at all, I'll be around afterwards. Thank you. Thank you for watching. We would love to get your opinion on this content, so please leave us some feedback on the comments section below. If you did like this content, give that like button a tap. And of course, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the Salesforce Admins YouTube channel. If you want to learn more about being a Salesforce admin in general, head on over to admin.salesforce.com. Thanks again.